On June 12th, a gunman opened fire at Pulse nightclub, killing 49 people, injuring scores more. It was the darkest day in the history of Orlando. Our city weeps for those killed, and we will never forget the 49 we lost. This tragedy has also brought out the very best in the city of Orlando, which has refused to let the massacre define it. Orlando United started as a hashtag, but has become a rallying cry. We've seen the community come together like never before. I'm Roger Simmons of the Orlando Sentinel, and today we're here at the Dr. Phillips Center for the Performing Arts, the home of the largest memorials to the 49 killed. We're here to focus on the victims, stories of hope, and our forever changed community. Whether it be the first responders and the lives they saved, people lining up across the region to donate blood, or the pop-up memorials and vigils like the one here, our community stands together. A week before what would become the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history, Orlando Regional Medical Center doctor Joshua Corsa bought a new pair of shoes. Little did he know that in a few days, those sneakers would become a symbol of all that's good and all that's evil in this world. It was, it was through my socks, through my scrubs, through my underwear. I saw the shoes and I sat down and I just thought I need to put something out there just, you know, so that they know I'm okay and just so they kind of know what's going on. I'm joined now by reporter Nassim Miller, who worked on this story. Nassim, how did you come across Dr. Corsa's story? We came across Dr. Corsa's story on social media, and he had made a very emotional post on Facebook showing his shoes and writing about how he felt about what had happened, how the, what this blood on his shoes represented. He managed to really capture all that the community was feeling in an interview we had with them. Rationally, it was not hard to triage these patients. Emotionally, Sorry. Like I said, I haven't had much time to sit and think about it, but it's far and away the hardest thing I've had to do. You know, some of these patients, you know, you know that you can't save them. You don't have the time or the resources, even though they're looking at you. And that's, like, it's something I'll have to deal with in my own time a long time from now. I was really kind of afraid to go home. Now I'm, I'm alone down here. And when you go home, you don't have a mission or a job or a task anymore. And you kind of have to deal with what you've just seen. And that was, that was probably the hardest part about all of it. And so, yeah, I came in Monday about 4 a.m. And I walked into the call room that we share. And I kind of saw him sitting in the corner. <laughs> in the corner and really that's about the first time it hit me and that is the, again the first time it all kind of hit me and the first time it really broke down. Dr. Corsa is planning to keep these shoes on he says until the last patient is discharged from ORMC and he's still not sure what he's going to do with them after he takes them off but he's most likely said he's going to keep them and probably put them in his office one day. We move now to a story of survival. People were calling us, me a hero, and it just it didn't sink in until I got to meet Junior. Help. How are you doing? Yes, I do. How are you feeling? As he faded in and out of consciousness while being carried away from Pulse nightclub, Jose Junior Martinez felt the warmth of two strangers. One told him in Spanish, God is with you. The other stuffed a knotted bandana into one of Martinez's two gunshot wounds trying to stop the bleeding that had soaked his pants. Each of the men held his hands as Martinez screamed in pain. They waited with him until paramedics hauled Martinez away on a gurney. Five days after the shooting, Martinez finally learned the names of the two men he credits with saving his life, Christopher Hansen and Carlos Rosario. I'm so happy that I came to that team and it really means like the world to me to know that I was able, I was able to do that for you. <laughs> Gracias. We all did the best that we could at the time, you know, yeah. and I was just really happy that I saw that. Fue algo que no me esperaba, fue algo horrible, porque yo te dije a ti que me estaba muriendo, pero tú me decías, no, no te vas a morir, tú vas a vivir, y tú me diste mucha fuerza, te lo juro. And that's when it really hit me, like, I, I really was a hero, I saved his life. It, 
and he was so thankful and and to see him smile and to be like yes that's him that's chris that's one on tv that's that's him who saved me and then to know that he wanted to meet us and, and his family it just made me feel so special We're joined now by Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer to talk about the impact of the shooting on his city. What is your reaction to the way the community has come together after this tragic event? I have used the term that June the 12th was the worst day in the history of Orlando, but today I stand here more proud of this community than I have ever been. The response has been overwhelming in terms of responding with love and compassion and unity and we won't be defined by the act of the shooter, we're gonna be defined by that response and it has been overwhelming. Whether you're looking at the tributes that are right outside here of Deepak or the fact that people stood for hours and hours to give blood on that first and second day because we see it said we need blood. We had a vigil at Lake Eola one week after the shooting. There were 50,000 people there estimated. You were on stage with a number of people. Did you have any idea that the size of the crowd at that point from your vantage point? You know, that was a little spontaneous vigil that three um, young people had decided to have and it just grew legs of its own and grew over the week and I don't think they had any idea that it was going to be the numbers it was, but collectively I think the community was ready to mourn together because there were other vigils mm -hmm. during the week. One specifically was here that had probably five or 6,000 on Monday night. Tuesday night, we had a multi-faith, multi-denominational service at First Baptist that was one of the highlights of the week for me, really, because it, it, well, you have a bu bunch of conservative Christian ministers that were rethinking what, acceptance of all people. And if there's anything good that is gonna come out of this, I think that a lot of hearts are more open to, um, to reaching out to people that they may not agree totally with. So do you think this will have a lasting impact on Orlando? You're talking about the opening of the hearts. Are we gonna be able to keep this Orlando United spirit going, do you think? I absolutely do. I was in a church service the sun, following Sunday, so the same time as the vigil, and the uh, pastor at St. Michael said that Orlando has been anointed to stand up against hatred and violence and to promote equality and unity and I think our citizens have been charged with that and you see all over the world I don't think since 9-11 has there been something like the unity and the love and the compassion and the support every city in America big and small has had some type of tribute and lit up the rainbow colors and you go to Sydney London Paris anywhere in the world so I think we've become a shining light for equality and diversity, and we have that obligation, that responsibility now. That's what we're about. Fantastic. Thank you, Mayor Dyer. My pleasure. Thank you. Everyone thinks they know what it means to live in Orlando, but those who actually live here know differently. Columnist Scott Maxwell offers some insight. Well, basically, as the eyes of the world shifted to Orlando, I realized that most people don't really know our town beyond the theme parks and now unfortunately, this tragedy. So I wanted to do a piece that endeavored to tell people what Orlando's really like and who we really are. Yes, we are theme parks. And yes, we are tacky. We're stucco mermaids and gift shops shaped like giant navel oranges. But I have to be honest, America, that tackiness isn't us, it's you. After all, we're not the ones who crave three t-shirts for $5 or water-filled snow globes that say Florida snowman. We are the place you want to come to escape your problems. But far away from the parks where hanging moss drips from live oaks and regal cypress trees stand guard, well, until we cut them down and make way for strip malls, most of us live in a different world. And there, in walkable hipster neighborhoods and McMansion-filled suburbs, we are so much more. We are artistic. Shakespeare and Tchaikovsky, Fringe Festival and Film Festival. We are cutting edge with one of the best performing arts centers in America, one of the MLS's most popular soccer franchises and an NBA team that at one point in time actually knew what the postseason looked like. We are foodies, flush with James Beard finalists, with culinary hubs like the East End Market, which sits smack dab in the middle of one of those walkable neighborhoods I mentioned. For all those non-theme park reasons, the New York Times ranked Orlando as number 13 on its list of 50 places to go on the planet, right between St. Vincent and Zimbabwe. 
If that all sounds incredibly sophisticated, well, it is. But it's also misleading. For here in Orlando, we are also poor. We have some of the lowest wages of any major metro in America, thanks mainly to tourism attractions and hotel occupations that don't pay living wages. We have an economy built on the backs of people who scrub toilets on International Drive and have to take three bus transfers to do it. By now you know we have a lot of gay friends and neighbors, but if you've been left with the impression that they have to hide in nightclubs, well, you've been misled. The city flies rainbow flags downtown. More than 100,000 people attend our pride parades around Lake Viola. One year I rode on a float and half the city council was riding on floats around me. There are no closets here. Orlando is largely an oasis of open minds and acceptance in a state that makes headlines for intolerance. Diversity is one of Orlando's hallmarks. Yes, we're Latin, as you know from Latin Night at Pulse, but that's an oversimplification. We are Puerto Rican, Cuban, Mexican, and Dominican. We're Haitian and Asian. We are South Carolinians and New Yorkers. We are transplants. Oh, you know what else we are? We're brave. We have alligators, mosquitoes, hurricanes, sinkholes, tornadoes, snakes, and cockroaches the size of toy poodles. We have a summer that starts in March, ends at Christmas, and involves 280% humidity for much of that time. We are evolving getting beyond our citrus roots and theme park mindset to become a place where people want to live. And they do want to live here, America. In fact, they've left many of your cities to come join ours. Check the census data. We are faith-filled, we are generous. Certainly we have our faults, lots of them. Maddening traffic, underfunded education, and politicians who frequently require grand juries. I spend the better part of most of my years documenting all that. I think basically we are diverse and cultured and aspiring to be a lot more. We are a lot of things. But what happened in that nightclub on that one night? Well, that is not Orlando. We will determine how Orlando is remembered, not as a community that was broken, but as a community that united. And we will not forget those who lost their lives. We end this show with a tribute to the 49 victims of the Pulse tragedy. Each one had their own story. Here is a look at those we lost. was in the bathroom when the bullets started flying. He came out, he saw people in harm's way, and he pushed them out of harm's way, and he was shot in the chest and the stomach and the side. So, I mean, he died a hero. Amanda was uh, 25, was transforming her life. She had lost 180 pounds over the last two years and wanted to be a nurse. Her brother said all she wanted to do was help people. Oscar Arancera Montero was a 26-year-old who was building a happy life in Kissimmee. He lived with Simon A. Carrillo, another victim of the attack, who survived. They had a home together with their three pet chihuahuas. Rodolfo Ayala Ayala, 33, was a biologics assistant at One Blood Donation Center. He was referred to uh, by his friends as compassionate and uh, someone who loved to dance. Antonio Devon Brown, age 29, was a captain in the U.S. Army Reserve. A cousin described him as a very easygoing guy, always smiling. He was living in Orlando, and he was a human resources manager at a Lowe's store in Seminole County, while also remaining in the Army Reserve. Daryl Burt was 29. The people who knew him described him as a really hard worker, someone who was passionate about community service. He was someone that was not afraid to lead. Kamoy was an assistant producer for a TV show called La Vaz Kids. In a story on Telemundo's website, Kamoy was described as loving, talented, and with a great promising future. He was 24 years old. In the Windy City, Angel was a busy man. He was a Zumba instructor, an employee at Old Navy, and a nurse technician at a college. He left those jobs this year and came here, according to his Facebook, and started a job at the Florida Retina Institute last Thursday, just a couple days before the shooting. Omar grew up in Tennessee and moved to Orlando to pursue his career of dancing and acting. Omar worked here at Target and at a Starbucks, and that he loved dancing with friends, and that's what he was doing the night he was killed at Pulse. Simon Carrillo was beloved by his co-workers. He was a general manager at an Orlando area McDonald's and had celebrated his partner Oscar's birthday 
um, just a couple weeks ago. The couple had just purchased a house together in Kissimmee last year. Condi, 39, was a makeup artist and was uh, a partner both in life and business with uh, Juan Pablo Rivera Velasquez. Uh, some of the people I spoke with said that they were some of the, the best people they've known, always had, a, always had smiles on their faces, always wanted to put smiles on other people's faces. Corey Connell was 21 and a graduate of Edgewater High School. He worked at Publix and he hoped to be a firefighter someday, his friends said. Kevin Crosby was a 25-year-old business owner. He had his own marketing firm. He worked for all of his goals tirelessly. That was what was important to them. Anthony Luis Disla loved to dance. He was born in Puerto Rico, and that's where he was raised. He went to college there, but just short of his graduation, he decided to pack up his belongings and move to Orlando to start a career dancing and become a choreographer. Dianca Drayton was complicated, uh, polarizing, if you will. She was a woman who loved intensely, uh, but was quick to let those who crossed her know that they had done wrong. Drayton was on a course of redemption. She was someone that was trying to turn her life around and was apparently succeeding in doing so. Fernandez is someone who is passionate about every aspect of life. He was a performer. He loved to go up on the stage, uh, dance to choreograph songs, and at work, uh, he was the heart and soul of the office. He was someone that was always singing, always telling jokes, was just someone that had an infectious personality, someone who everyone around him loved. Mercedes Marisol Flores was a 2008 graduate of Ridge Community High School. She was attending classes at Valencia College and uh, had interest in becoming a party planner sometime down the road. Peter O. Gonzalez Cruz was a 22-year-old UPS worker who lived in Orlando. On Twitter, Peter's cousin wrote, Rest in peace, my wonderful cousin, and may you rest in heaven. Friends and family of the couple expressed their grief on social media, posting photos of the two of them out having a time with huge smiles on their faces. They were described as a cute, loving couple that everyone will remember warmly. Paltrow Henry was 41 years old and a native of Chicago. He was remembered by his boyfriend, Francisco Hernandez, as a loving man, a gentle man, and a man who enjoyed dancing and was excellent at pool. Frankie Hernandez moved to Orlando about three years ago from Lafayette, Louisiana. Um, he told his family he loved it here because he had a good job at Calvin Klein Outlet Store, he was managing it, and because he felt accepted here. Miguel Angel Oneato was a 30-year-old father living in Apopka. According to his Facebook page, Miguel was a huge soccer fan and worked at Fajita Mex Mexican Catering in Orlando. De Jesus, originally from Rio Piedras, Puerto Rico, was a visual merchandiser at Forever 21. His sister spoke to the Sentinel and just talked about how hard of a worker he was and how, how loved he was by family and friends and the community and how, how gentle of a human being he was. Javier Jorge Reyes was a proud Latino. He was a very fine makeup artist. He was a very hard worker and he had a caring heart. Joseph Fat is described by his family as a soft-spoken teenager who had recently graduated high school and started taking classes at Valencia College. Family members say that he was still starting to chart his course in life as are many 19-year-olds. Eddie spent the last hour or so of his life texting his mother. He said, I love you, mommy. And he knew, he knew what was going on. He knew the shooter. He told his mother about that. It was a really tragic thing that played out for her. Alejandro Barrios Martinez was a native of Cuba who moved to Florida within the past couple of years. He's the type of person who would see you in the parking lot and he'd have a whole conversation with you. He was 21 years old when he died early Sunday morning in the Pulse nightclub shooting. Juan moved to Orlando from Mexico about eight years ago. He was a supervisor for the past five years for APDC Services. He was remembered by his colleagues as a very kind supervisor and a very dedicated worker. Brenda McCool was the mother of 12 children. She was a two-time cancer survivor. Her friends said she was a person who was full of life. She was always there for her friends with a word of wisdom. Gilberto Ramon Silva Menendez was 25 years old. He was going to Ana Mendez University's Orlando campus studying health management. Uh, another cousin called him the, the light in the life of uh, family gatherings. Kimberly K.J. Morris had just moved from Hawaii to Orlando. She just got a job at the Pulse nightclub working as a bouncer. She loved being active and was so excited to get into the LGBT community here in Orlando. 
Akira Murray had just graduated from high school in Philadelphia last week. She was in Orlando on a graduation trip with a cousin. She was a standout basketball player and a top student. She was also a quiet leader who stood out for how hard she worked in the classroom and on the court. Geraldo Ortiz Jimenez, his friends better knew him as Drake Ortiz, flew into Orlando on Friday. He was here to see a Selena Gomez concert. He was just a big dreamer and was always optimistic with his friends that he loved to go out uh, on vacations to the country and, and was just a joy to be around. Joel Rayon Baniagua was a 31-year-old construction worker living in Ocoee. Joel was born in Veracruz, Mexico and lived there on and off for years. He recently moved back to Florida less than a year ago. Joel was described by many as a very good friend. Jean Carlos Mendez Perez, he uh, was known as being the best salesman in the perfume store where he worked. Family members of Jean told me that he was warm. They told me he was full of life, that he had a great sense of humor. Rios was a 25-year-old social worker who lived in Brooklyn. His mother, Gertrude Merced, said they last spoke one day before the shooting. She recalled, he sounded so happy. Enrique was a wonderful person. Eric Ivan Ortiz Rivera was 36 years old. He had come to the Orlando area from Puerto Rico, just described as a very friendly, generous person who would do anything for anybody that asked him. Jean Carlos Nieves Rodriguez was one of the victims in the Pulse nightclub shooting. About a month and a half ago, he bought his first house. One of the primary reasons why he bought that house was to give his mother a nice place to live. Xavier Emanuel Serrano Rosado was an entertainer around town. The mother of his son said he loved to spend time with the little boy, playing video games and playing in the pool. 24-year-old Christopher San Feliz was a bank employee living in Tampa. A former classmate of Chris said he's one of the most positive people he's ever known. Imari Rodriguez Sullivan was 24 years old, the mother of two young sons, including a three-month-old named Sergio, and the wife of auto racing driver Juan Borges. She is originally from Puerto Rico and worked at a Wendy's there before moving to Central Florida. Edward was a, a brand manager for a travel website that catered to the gay community. The, the owner of the travel website that he worked for who said that this was the saddest day that he can remember. Um, Shane, actually just a few hours before the Pulse nightclub incident, was performing with his band Frequency at another nightclub, Blue Martini. He was known everywhere in Orlando. He was a really outgoing guy. He was in great shape. He dressed well, and he loved to belt out kind of these, these ballad-type hits from the 80s and the 90s. He lived his life to the fullest, and uh, people uh, loved being around him for that. Martin Benitez Torres, age 33, of San Juan, Puerto Rico, had just arrived in Orlando a few days before the shooting early Sunday morning at Pulse nightclub. He was a student at Sistema Universitario Ana G. Mendez in San Juan. Juan Rivera Velasquez ran the Alta Pelicuria hair salon in Kissimmee. It wouldn't be a rare sight to see him telling his clients, oh my gosh, you look so beautiful, you look amazing. As one client said, they will just lift you up and make you feel good about yourself. We lost good individuals who would have contributed more to this world. Luis Vielma, an attraction worker at Universal Orlando. Friends describe him as a fun-loving, kind, outgoing person. Vielma was also working towards becoming an EMT, enrolling in courses at Seminole State College. Luis Daniel Wilson Leon was shot to death Sunday morning at Pulse nightclub. He stood up to and stood out and endured a lot of bullying for being gay in Puerto Rico. He was a very loving person. He was strong and he would stand and protect his friends. Gerald Arthur Wright was 31 years old. He worked at the Magic Kingdom. Friends say he was just a wonderful guy. 